Hey guys, and welcome back to Narcissa 2. So, let's just continue. I don't want to vi- or I don't want you to visit me anymore. She continued to sob. But- because when you make such a face, it's hard for me to- The rolling sound of bells. Prologue, Himiko Maps. The church was filling with people headed to Sunday school. The day the cold of winter began in earnest. The band wrapped around my wrist changed from blue to white. In the end, the car wasn't accepted, but the next day, into my hands, maps were delivered. Why was it that I wanted these? The exact reason still not even I knew. It was just from then on. I never saw her. Her perfect attendance stopped there. <sighs> 15th summer. God, I'm gonna cry so hard. Oh, I'm gonna cry so hard this episode, I just know. Those dazzling days. Those summer days. Summer 1999. Burning sunlight and the sound of cicadas. Today also looked like it would be a hot day. The third summer that I faced since the day I was first hospitalized. Of course, it's not like I was hospitalized the whole time. They were, uh, there were days interrupted with home and outpatient care. It's been half a year since they last came. The time I spent wearing pajamas slowly grew. As if in direct proportion, the number of people who came to visit me shrank. At first, classmates came to visit me every day. People that were once called friends. But now, they had turned into acquaintances. Even if I meet them on the street, they'd leave after exchanging a few words of greeting. Soon, those acquaintances will turn to strangers, and someday, I'll probably be erased from their memories. It probably makes them uncomfortable. For people to, or who live normally, my very existence to them, even if they meet me, it probably doesn't raise their spirits, and probably the same goes for thinking about me. And so, I think they've decided to erase me. Yet, whenever the end of the school day came, every day I continued to watch for someone to come. And then after half a year of waiting, I stopped looking outside. Finally, I remembered to close the curtains. Except the fact. Guessed that the reason. After three years, even I came to understand. It's not that they had forgotten about me. It seemed they, or they made as if, from the start, they never knew me, never saw me. As if, they, or as if there had been nothing there to begin with. They probably want to keep their eyes closed. Around when I was being admitted in and out of the hospital when people had already stopped coming to visit me, and I had most likely been erased from everyone's memories. My family moved from the freestanding home we had long lived in to an apartment, and mother started working part-time in a nearby takeout lunch shop. The meaning behind it all, even I could understand. Hospital fees were no joke. In the ward, every day, it was a conversation topic uh, for the patients. I come to know how the patients themselves felt the responsibility to their families far more than the families could imagine. I'm sorry guys, that really hit home. <laughs> and then the small, old, slightly dirty, or dirty wooden building that was our new home. On top of being smaller, father's daily commute stretched to over two hours. However, the distance I had to take to the hospital became a three-minute walk. In front of that beat-up, cramped apartment, Father said, The air here is nice and feels good, doesn't it? Saying that, he smiled, and Mother smiled in the same way. Because the heat might aggravate my health, they put, on, they put an air conditioner in my room. Of course, no other room had one. And Mother, who had started going to that part-time job, often brought back croquets and fries for me, saying they were leftovers. In that cramped room we ate together, always they smiled happily. It was very... painful. Their thoughtfulness was unbearably painful. 
Instead of feeling thankful or happy, I was filled with guilt. It's your fault. Probably that's what I wanted to say to them. I wanted them to blame me more. Being treated kindly hurt. I remember uncontrollable feelings of irritation, even anger towards myself. If God were around, I wanted him to quickly heal me. Or if that wasn't possible, to let me die now. Everyone else was in the middle of erasing my existence. But in contrast, my parents sought to make me stand out. That was much more painful. Even as I... Even as I was being treated kindly, I hated myself for being unable to repay it. I cursed the fact that one of the countless misfortunes in the world happened to fall on me by chance. In such times, smiling and putting on a cheerful air may have been what I was supposed to do, but all I was able to manage was to quietly eat the fries that I really didn't like very much. There was no silence in the air. The burning sun and cries of cicadas. When the white rainy season clouds cleared and it had turned completely into summer, after being readmitted to the hospital for the ninth time, finally I was discharged. But that wasn't the end of it. The word discharged also meant until the next time I was admitted, the beginning of a long life of outpatient care. Under the blazing sky today, I again walked the three minute distance in my pajamas. To my mother, who had offered to come along, I replied, It's alright. In my own way, it was supposed to be an out of it was supposed to be out of consideration for her, but the desolate look on her face at my words had also hurt. My feet happened to stop before some school. Most likely it was an elementary school. Since it was already summer vacation, there weren't too many people around in sight. In front of that empty schoolyard, for some reason I wound up gazing at it. Without thinking, my feet had stopped. Occasionally, I would see happy children running around, and my eyes would follow them. Under the blazing sky, the long-sleeved pajamas were hot. I felt strongly out of place, gazing at the schoolyard. After standing there for a while, I once again began to walk. However, not towards the hospital, but home. And once I returned to my room, I took out the sailor uniform that had been in my dresser. Sleeves that I hadn't passed my arms through in three years, a just like new uniform. Previously, they had been worn for only a single week. And now, to me, they were the only clothes other than pajamas I owned. Once again, walking under the blazing sky, the noisy cicadas and running sweat as the same, or was the same as just before. But the people who walked by, their eyes did not pause upon me. Even I, as a part of the backdrop of the city, as a part of what builds up everyday life, felt accepted. And then when I entered the schoolyard from earlier, before my eyes was a metal bar for small children to play with, I extended my hands toward it. Placing strength into my arms, I pulled with all my might and kicked at the ground. A moment's sensation of floating, and my body spins around. It's still okay. Oh gosh, it's the cover. It's the cover art. No, I'm crying. Ah I whispered that aloud for some reason while I looked around from atop the bar. The strong sunlight made the playground seem white, and the heat made the ground look wavy. Occasionally, I could hear the voices of happy children and the incess er, incessant voices of cicadas declaring that summer was their season. With my arms already beginning to shake from supporting my weight, I soaked up the present. Why was it that I suddenly wanted to do this, I wonder? The exact reason not even I knew. But now, the times I wore anything but pajamas dwindled. The pressure from the need to do otherwise had also disappeared. Did I find that to be sad? Or perhaps I wanted to test if I still had strength. I should be the same as everyone. Should be the same as the normal people who were over there. So just from a somersault around a bar, I shouldn't be making such a strained face. Because I felt that way, I forced myself to make a smile. 
But just as I was unable to stop the shaking of my arms, it seemed that too was difficult for me. God. Oh gosh, this is gonna be so long. Because I'm gonna cry so much. Cicada's calls filled the air. Hot. Even though it was still morning, the asphalt was wavy from the heat. Today also looked like it would be a hot day. And in that, as always, I headed toward the hospital alone. With this distance, even though I could have gone in pajamas when I had to go out, I've come to wear my, so er, my sailor uniform. Most likely, I was still wavering. How long this wavering will continue, not even I knew. One day, I may suddenly just be able to give up. It was just that I had be or I had come to think that the span of three years was more than enough time for a person to change. Then, passing by that school, and as the entrance to the hospital was before my eyes, the button is falling off. In my hands was a small tote bag. I noticed that the button that held the handle was fraying off. How long had it been like that? I didn't know. But coming all this way, I wasn't going to go back home. So I held the bag to my chest and continued towards the hospital. The usual doctor, the usual exchanges, and today's examination ended. When my body's condition was stable, it was once a week. Three times a week seemed to be a sign of a short hospitalization. With this, this week's examination was over. As I thought that, I headed toward the exit on the first floor. In the afternoon, the doctors weren't seeing patients, so the halls were mostly empty. Occasionally, a doctor would walk by with a group of intern-like people in tow. Nurses rushed to the first aid window. A patient, probably under dietary restrictions, was in the shop buying snacks. Their wristband was visible, green, which I heard was for digestive orders. All of, the, or all of this was just the ordinary, everyday hospital and in front of that shop was the first time that I met her. Hey you! Eh? Suddenly, a bright voice called out to me and surprised me. Turning around before me was the pajama-clad figure of an Onesan I didn't recognize. I had thought it might have been someone I met while I was admitted here, but I didn't recall the face or figure. Yes? That button, it's falling off, you know! As she spoke, she pointed at my tote bag. It might have been a simple act of kindness, but since I had already noted the problem, I had trouble finding a reply. Why, yes it is. Why, yes it is? That's it? You have nothing else to say? Thank you. As I spoke, I lowered my head a bit. Because I already knew, my reply came out hesitatingly. But even then, it was too difficult to say thank you very much. The Oneison that I hadn't seen before, her long black hair and bright or bright voice left an impression. Looking at her slippers, the kind provided by the hospital, she was probably not an outpatient, but admitted. Looking at her thin wrist, her wristband was white. That was a color I hadn't seen before. Say, how about I fix it for you? Eh? I have a sewing set. But... At her sudden words, I hesitated. But not over a button that I... Or that didn't mean much. These past few years, because my existence was always only being erased, I had absolutely no experience with someone actively trying to relate with me. Don't worry about it! Look, come here! Don't worry, it's not like it'll be a weird place! With those words, she started walking briskly, and while wrapped in mixed feelings, I followed behind. We got into the elevator. Without a word, she pressed the button for the highest floor. Seventh floor? Oh, do you know about it? Uh, not much. The seventh floor is the place they called the hospice. I wasn't too familiar with it, and of course, I've never been there. For one thing, I heard that people not involved with it were barred from entering. It probably meant that if this Onesan here were headed to the seventh floor, she was a person from there. Soon the elevator reached its stop, and right in front of it was the nurse's station. And when the doors opened, altogether the gazes of the nurses turned towards me. 
Ah, uh, this is someone I know! With that one sentence, they once again went back to their work. No one looked toward us anymore. It was just my first time here. But without putting my finger on it, I thought the atmosphere was especially heavy. The place the Onesan finally took me to looked like a lounge area. It was very different from the third floor, or third or other floors that I've uh, been admitted to. Those didn't have these sofas or the TV. I'll fix this for you quick, okay? With that, she took my tote bag and, with what seemed like a practiced hand, began fixing the button. And like her, I sat down on the sofa and watched. Even if I looked around, there were a uh, few signs of people. Occasionally, an elderly or helper-like person going by was about all. By the way... Er, by the way, did you catch a cold or are you visiting someone? Right now, I'm an outpatient. I hesitated over how to answer, but said the truth. I added that I had been, or just been discharged recently and was an outpatient now. I see. Looks like you've got a heart too. By the way, what club are you in? Club? Well, it's supposed to be summer break, right? As she spoke, she pointed at my uniform. You've been in the hospital, so maybe the literature club? Or maybe the manager of a sports club? Not really, I'm not in any. Oh? Well, that's an unexpected answer. Is it... Er, <clears throat> is it... That you hate pajamas? That's a sudden perspective question. I couldn't find the words to respond with. Or perceptive, sorry. Uh, it's not that I hated pajamas, but I sensed that the precise reason would be difficult to put into words. And what that Onesan had asked was probably aimed straight at that. She hadn't simply been asking whether I liked pajamas literally. Onesan, you're someone from here? Yeah, even though I look like this, I'm a resident of the seventh floor. I guess the short of it is, someone whose death has been confirmed. That which I had only known on the level of rumors was now clearly spelled out by a resident of the seventh floor. She used the word death in such a bright in such bright and relaxed tones. At the least, it didn't seem like I could comprehend. This person, what on earth could her thoughts be? Hey, hey, if it's all right with you, come play again. Me? Um, er, mm, there's nothing to do and it's boring. Plus, we're here, visiting hours go until late. And with that, she told me various things about the seventh floor. Up until now, it had been vague, but it seemed that the rumors that it was a place to wait to die were true. There are other rules, but I can't say anymore. Why? Well, that should be obvious. Because you are not a resident of this place. It was only then, when she whispered that, did her face cloud. I felt that expression held loneliness and seemed filled with intensity as well. Right now, I was wearing these clothes, steeped with the lingering regret of, or for once normal days. And unlike myself, the Sonesan, no, these residents of the seventh floor, had probably given up on everything and already had made up their resolve. Well, even if it's just when you come for examinations, drop by! Since no matter how hard I try, there's only about a half a year left. She said that, and but she said that, and by way of farewell, she once more turned her cheery face towards me. Long black hair, white wristband, and a bright, relaxed way of talking were my impressions. Still, neither of us knew the other's name. My fifteenth summer was, or this was our first meeting. Hot. A few days later, again I visited the hospital. However, it wasn't like it it wasn't like it was an examination day. If it's alright with you, come to play. The words of the One son I met a few days ago. Maybe because I was somehow concerned that the seventh floor place or maybe I was curious for some reason. The elevator do or bell rang. I came to the highest floor. With a nod to the nurses who looked my way, I made my way to the door that the One son had told me. I gave the door a knock. Ah, uh, yes, come in! The door opened with a click. I came. Welcome, I've been waiting! Come, sit, sit! It was hot today, wasn't it? Mm. 
sitting up in her bed, she offered the folding chair next to her. The first, uh, the first room on the seventh floor that I entered felt a little different from the third floor rooms I was used to. Sorry about that, but you know, I was sure he'd that you'd come. You've got plenty of time after all. Why did you jump to that conclusion? But I am all out of time, guys, so if you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!